Right. Good evening, everyone. This webinar is organized by the NCD Committee of the College of General Practitioners of Sri Lanka. Uh, last year, the NCD Committee conducted a Google survey to find out uh, what topics our members wanted as CME programs. So many members wanted to know the proper techniques of using inhaler devices. So we thought of organizing this webinar uh, on that topic. And I thank Mr. Aravinda who readily accepted the invitation to be the resource person uh, today. So over to you, uh, Priyanti, uh, as the moderator today. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome all of you to, the, to this evening. I say good evening to all of you. So let me introduce to the, our speaker, Mr. Aravinda. He's assistant manager in promotions and training. Uh, Mr. Aravind is a self-motivated graduate with great skills in sales and marketing. He has served in many reputed organizations like Cipla Pharmaceuticals and AstraZeneca. He's recognized for his skills in negotiation, team management, and problem solving and many more. And he also is a, had masters of business administration from Anglia Rakshan University and specialist on. To conserve the time, I make it a short introduction, although he has a long so I would like to invite you to today's lecture. So over to you, Mr. Aravind. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for that nice introduction. Hope uh, you can hear me, ma'am. Yes, I right. can hear you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, dear doctors. Uh, thanks for the opportunity as well. So, uh, without uh, taking much of a time, uh, since it you know a bit of late, I'll uh, straightly go to the session. Uh, so, I'll share my presentation, which is I'll talk about a few uh, facts uh, before I start. Can you see the presentation? Yeah? Uh, no, not yet, Mr. Arvind. Uh, no. Now you can see. Uh, yes. yeah. Now we can see. So, uh, so we are about to talk about the art and science of uh, inhaler use uh, with some important facts on yeah. inhalers and uh, how to use. Uh, so uh, today's agenda will be like I'll be uh, talking on few important facts on inhalers, most uh, focused in on uh, techniques how to use uh, all the devices. So uh, uh, different kind of inhaler techniques and you know uh, different kind of inhalers which is available in the market and space devices and uh, total inhaler demonstration. So uh, this is one of the fact, you know, uh, when you are using uh, inhaler devices, uh, or just like, you know, 20 to 30% of the drug just goes to the lung and 80% is basically, they say it's swallowed. So uh, apart from that, it has oropharyngeal uh, deposition, uh, which leads to the systemic circulation uh, absorption, but it's a very minute amount uh, because it goes as micrograms. So, uh, and it's excreted in the urine. So uh, this is a glimpse which, which was used uh, previously in uh, like, you know, the beginning, uh, they say this, uh, when the drugs was like, you know, uh, the propellant was used as CFC, the uh, carbon. Now it is uh, used to change, they have changed to HFA. So uh, now the scenario is a bit different. So the particle size is much of that is very important in terms of using an inhaler, like, you know, in the MDIs or the DPIs. Uh, you have, uh, so, uh, there's a recommendation of inhaler particle size, which should be there in uh, inhaler devices, in both in MDIs, as well as the uh, DPIs, the dry powder inhalers and the uh, uh, pressurized meter dose inhalers. So uh, these are the particle size that it should be there. Uh, different companies have different techniques to, you know, uh, uh, calculate these, you know, 
when they are manufacturing the APIs, which is active pharmaceutical ingredient when they uh, start of this manufacturing. So it always should be uh, less than uh, five microns and uh, more than one micron, the particle size. So when it's come to MDIs, uh, it is one to five. And uh, when it's come to DPI, it should be two to five between those parameters. If it's more than five, the regional depression will be like um, mostly in the or, or esophageal region or the mouth, and uh, there is there are the minimum uh, effect. So there is no clinical effect on that because we need to send the drug to the lung. So it always should be between one to five, and if it's less than uh, one micron, it always dissolves. Uh, and it won't uh, reach the desired site to get, give the desired action. So you have a high systemic absorption in terms of safety. So uh, the particle size is also very much important. So we have uh, different kind of uh, inhalers. So if you see, you have meter dose inhalers. Uh, for that, you can add a device, which is spacers and mask as well. So we do have the dry powder inhalers, which dry powder inhalers also has different kind of uh, categories or different kind of devices, which you can group into. We'll talk in, uh, in, in, in further slides. And you have ablisers and you have breath actuated meter dose inhalers. So uh, we call autohaler as well. So uh, before I move on to the demonstration, I just want to show the parts which of the device, uh, which we call the PMDI. So uh, if you see, you can see the canister, you can see the canister as this uh, different part. It's made of uh, stainless steel, right? And the most important part is the uh, metered valve. It should be like this. Hope you can see, it's a small valve. And you have the actuator as well. So this is the actuator, it comes as white. And you you have different kind of colors uh, in terms of uh, the caps. Different kind of caps are there. So these colors is to identify the drug. Sometimes patient, if you say the color, a patient might not uh, remember the drug name. So you show the color. Uh, if the patient says the color, we know how the that how you can uh, identify the drug. So these parts are very much important. If this assembly uh, assembly of these parts is not that correct, it won't work. Uh, the, the the drug won't be uh, delivered properly. So the there are different kind of uh, PMDIs in the market. So uh, there are different colors, as I mentioned. Uh, so there was a problem in MDIs which you cannot see the uh, doses. You know, you have to use different techniques. You know, you have to put in the water and see the weight. And, you know, you have to write down the uh, starting date when the patient was initiated, when the patient starts to inhale. Then only we can uh, have a count on it. But recent past, there was the, the this was introduced as most of the inhalers came as the dose counters. Now you can see the remaining doses of that. So I'll uh, touch upon how to read the doses as well. So this is the dose counter, which is in red mark. So before I go to how to read the dose counter, I'll move into uh, the breathing techniques. So uh, the breathing technique while using the PMDI is most important because uh, there are two different techniques when you're using the PMDI as well as the dry powder inhalers and even you are using with a spacer. So there are different kind of techniques in breathing as well uh, when you are using an inhaler. So the most simple way to remind, uh, keep it in mind that you know how to uh, how to breathe while using it, in, uh, especially uh, MDI, is slow and deep, we call it slow and deep. So uh, the slow and deep is a technique that, uh, that they use uh, when you, are you, when you are using a uh, PMDI. So uh, now let's move on to how to use a PMDI. There are 
you know, different kind of uh, articles and different kind of uh, 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 doctors use uh, different kind of ways, you know, to treat or uh, teach or to how to use a PMDI. There are different kind of videos. So I will uh, I will be talking on, you know, most common uh, uh, way of, you know, using and the best way. So let's see what needs to be done before use. Hygiene is most important and uh, not only the patient uh, and their devices as well, because most of the patient uh, doesn't know, you know, uh, we have, uh, especially I have contracted most of the patients, uh, you know, is the hygiene is very much bad. You know, they use different kind of substance, you know, to eat because we do not, we take the inhalers via our um, oral family region, which is from the mouth, not from the nose. So uh, we have to, uh, educate them uh, before using an inhaler to be, you know, uh, very much hygiene. That's the number one. And uh, the devices comes later to how to clean, you know, how to thing and on and emptying the lung. Most of the patients, the most in, most valuable part is the breathing part because most of the patient doesn't breathe properly. So uh, if the lung is full of air, so the patient won't be able to breathe in. So you have to empty the lung. So, and that is the most important part in terms of uh, using any kind of an inhaler and the posture of the device as well as the patient. So uh, let's see how uh, to use an inhaler. So uh, the, especially a PMDI. So if you have prescribed two inhalers, uh, you know, uh, you use two different kind of inhalers to treat the bronchodilation as well as the uh, inflammatory part. So if they have two inhalers, you have to always advise the patient uh, to use the uh, the blue inhaler, which is a bronchodilator first, because most of the patient uh, doesn't use it properly. Uh, there is a benefit of using that uh, bronchodilator first. So secondly, you take the control or the preventer or the anti-inflammatory drug, which comes in a combination or like, you know, IGS lab combination. And the steroid only preparation is also there, which they can use uh, the second as a second inhaler. The most important part is using the second inhaler because when the patient uh, tend to rely more on the uh, uh, reliever usage than the uh, anti-inflammatory part. So we have to advise that as well. So the demonstration uh, starts as this. So you have different kind of inhalers like this. This is the blue inhaler. This is the uh, salbutamol preparation. And you have the green color one. So this is the salmonyl photocoson preparation. You have the butyrosinate formatron preparation. You have the tripropyl preparation. So any kind of device, the usage is same. So the first thing you have to do is uh, keep it in mind. The patient has to be clean. Um, the the patient is to, 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 through the mouth. So the mouth has to be clean. And if it's a new inhaler always as the first time if it's a new inhaler you have to shake it first time at least 10 seconds you have to shake it because uh, every time the patient uses every time the patient uses a puff they need to shake every puff they need to shake it so some patients just shake it once and take uh, many puffs but that's not the case you have to shake it each and every puff the patient takes so uh, I'll come now how to take the puff correctly. So you have to hold the device, you have to shake it, send the first puff out like this. This is, we do as a prime part in the beginning itself, because if you see that as the first time when I uh, press this, you didn't see the wave coming out, but when you uh, do the second time only thing. So you have to, uh, press until a uh, puff goes out. This is for the first time. Or else, if you keep for a longer time, like you know, like if you are when you are using a salbutamol uh, preparation, that you have to keep it. You know, whenever the, you have to use it as always. So it might be in a place for a more than two three days. Then you have to take it. Then obviously you have to uh, send a puff out again. But if you are using daily, you need to do no need to do do that. Just once at the beginning or else that you, if you uh, buy a new one, you have to send the puff out. So uh, <clears throat> you have to shake it, send the puff out, then shake it again for the first puff. Now you have to breathe out. 
the position of the patient should be always uh, in an upright position. You have to sitting position or your head should be straight, right? And you have to tilt a bit uh, the chin up when you're using the device. So you shake it. You have to breathe out first and breathe in. Again, breathe out. Then only you have to be prepared to keep the device inside the um, mouth or uh, closest to the uh, lip. You breathe in, breathe out. Then you keep the device inside your mouth with a closed lips like this. A full closed lips should be there because the drug, uh, when you when you start to press this, if you do, if the lips doesn't close this in a in a, a tight manner, the drug will go from here. Right. So now the breathing process comes. I'm not going to keep, you know, inhale myself because it's uh, you have the drug here. So uh, you shake it, keep the inhaler in upright position like this. Chin up, keep the closure. Now the breathing process. You breathe out, keep in the mouth, and start slowly to breathe. Right. You know, if this is the parameter of this breathing, like, you know, that's the parameter, then what you have to do is you have to start slowly to breathe, right? So you have to start slowly in first second, then only you have to press this device, right? The press, press the puff, then only you have to start breathing fast again. Like you have to shake it, tilt the head up, keep it in the mouth. You kept it in the mouth. Likewise. So the breathing process is, you know, you have to start slowly, right? You come to this end, you puff it. Then only you have to, when the puff, you initiate the puff itself, you have to breathe fast, right? Likewise. So that's the way that you should take a PMDI uh, first path. If you initiate with the second path, right, uh, you have to shake it again, right? Then you have to breathe out, keep the device in the mouth. As I showed again, you have to use that way. Not shake it once and you, can, you cannot do two paths, right? Each and every path should be shaped in upright position. Then breathe out, keep the device, breathe in. You start breathing, then you have to press. Then when you initiate the press here, you have to start uh, breathing fast. So slow and deep breath in PMDIs. So after breathing, you have to hold the breath for about uh, five to 10 seconds, then exhale slowly. Right after using the device, you have to gargle your throat and you have to uh, uh, spit it out. So uh, that's the proper storage of this also matters, uh, and uh, the gargling your throat is also matters. So we found out a patient uh, very recently that uh, patient uh, uh, has used the device which uh, without opening this cap. So it's very unfortunate uh, the patient has used more than seven, eight uh, months uh, 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 when he has, a lady, she has gone to few doctors. Uh, then uh, this cap was closed, even the pharmacy has not uh, properly taught. She, she just has, you know, kept in the mouth and inhaled without opening this cap. So this is simple mistake that they, the patient makes. Uh, so this is also very important. So uh, so cleaning the device, you should not remove any part of this, uh, the canister or anything. Just wipe with a uh, dry cloth, explode it, and keep it. Before using the device, you should uh, check inside the mouthpiece whether you have anything, you know, any any substance uh, which is there because we inhale through our mouth. If there's any substance because small insects can go, if you can put in a tight, small uh, bottle or pack after usage, that will be helpful because insects can go. 
So you have to keep it in a, a storage is very much important after usage. And uh, gargle in the throat, which which most of the patients miss. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, when you are using or adding a spacer, uh, most of the spacers are not drug holding chambers. Uh, even the guideline says uh, to use a spacer with a PMDI uh, because 80% uh, of the patient uh, uh, make errors while using PMDI alone. So if you, if you, if you have the opportunity or if you think that this patient uh, hand mouth or the hand lung uh, coordination is not there, you have to obviously use a spacer device. So adding a spacer device, there are a few things. This is uh, this this one spacer. This is called the Serostat VT. Uh, this is uh, there are small spacers with uh, small volume, but uh, when the spacers comes as in the small volume, it doesn't matter the cylinder shape or the pad shape or the different kind of shapes are there, different kind of colors are there. Unless otherwise there is a difference in uh, static and non-static devices. This is a non-static one. Uh, non-static devices has more uh, lung deposition or the half-life is greater in a non-static device. The T-half is much more greater than the uh, non -st uh, static devices. So this is a non-static one. There is a lock there. Some devices doesn't come as this. You put this and you lock it like this. You have a cap here. You have a flap here inside, one way flap inside. If you clearly see one way flap, the valve. So this valve is, uh, is not there to hold the drug. Uh, this valve is to stop uh, breathing inside to the uh, device. So you have to take the MDI, you shake it, and you plug it onto the side, which is, you know, this is universal size, you know, any spacer can fit any inhaler. That's the way they make it. So you have to uh, plug it over here. And always remember the inhaler should be there in a straight position or in upright position. Uh, you can't uh, take uh, while sleeping or you can't take while you know angle like this you have to straight up straight and you have to the device should be always this line should be parallel to the ground that means the device should be straight and if there is a cap like this it is convenient the cap should open downside if if we plug it this way this will uh, you know you can't keep it will hit the nose so you have to see the convenience also so of the patient, so you have to plug it like this, right? So again, you have to keep the, you know, you have to shake the device, keep it. You have to close the lips, we are here, right? Here, you don't need a slow and deep. It's a tidal breathing that you need, like, you know, the tidal breathing is enough for this. Uh, but when you, before you uh, actuate this, you have to keep the mouth in the, mouthpiece, then only you have to actuate this. Breathe out, you keep the device, you actuate this, then you inhale while actuate this. If you clearly see, if you don't have the uh, mouth kept here, when you uh, press it, the drugs goes out. So that's the way that some devices are closer. But the thing is, you know, you have uh, you have to keep the mouth, then only you have to actually. If you want to hold the drug, there are, if there is a cap, you can close it. Then you, have, you can actuate the drug inside. The drug is there. It will there for the effectivity of the drug will be there until 60 seconds. You have to hold it very slowly. You can open it and keep in the mouth and you can inhale. That's the one way, but we always recommend to open it, keep in the mouth, then you have to spray. So each and every puff should be uh, shaped and the device should be upright. When you are using a, even the, if you are using a spacer, you have to gargle your throat and you have to 
uh, spit it out. And uh, uh, within like, you know, within a week, uh, two to three days apart, you can remove this and you can wash this device in a uh, flowing water or you, you, you can fill a basin of water and you can uh, shake it and you can keep it uh, to dry to the air. You should not keep in the sun or whatever. You have to just uh, leave it to dry in the air. Uh, you should not put any cloth or any device inside. Even though if you are taking from a device like this, this has a canister that which you can come uh, comes with a canister. So you can some device doesn't come. So you have to keep it in a packed box. Otherwise, uh, the dust and the germ or any 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 kind of uh, infectants can go there. So better to keep all the devices in a close type manner. So this spacer comes like this. You can you should not put your hands like this or you should not uh, put inside, you have to take it like this. You never put the hand inside and you clean it. So you have to wash and uh, dry in there. So that's how you clean that. And yet again, you have to uh, gargle your throat and spit it out. Then you have, uh, you can, this is uh, 280 volume. And this is, this is the big spacer. The volumetric spacer or the C plus spacer they say in the market. This is all comes in two pieces. You can plug it like this. This is the mouthpiece area, and this is where you uh, plug the device. So this is as there. But the only thing is the lung deposition is greater compared to this inner because this is static device, right? There is no non-static layer coated here. But the, uh, the better to use a non-static device, uh, if, if you can. So uh, same technique to use this as well. So the, you don't have a valve in this, valve in this. So you can't hold the drug in the chamber. You have to keep it in the mouth and then you have to inhale it. So if you have a tritropium or hypertropium along with uh, uh, along with a bronchodilator, another bronchodilator, which is a as uh, salvate about preparation, you have to take it first, then you go for a, the combination. So uh, this is how you combine with this. And if you see here, clearly see, the drug has, with, with this region, it drops. So uh, the faster that you can inhale, you have to take four to five breaths uh, without taking your mouth uh, out from the mouthpiece. So after that, you have to breathe out uh, after taking your mouth uh, from uh, the device that you can do. So one puff, four to five breaths in a spacer. That's how you take it from a spacer. So uh, if you, uh, now let's move into the dry powder inhalers. So there are a lot of inhalers in the market. Uh, so there are single doses, as I said, there are a lot of devices. You have single dose inhalers, you have multi dose inhalers. So, if you take multi doses, there are two different categories as well. So, uh, if you take the single dose inhalers, you have deep inhaler, revolizer, you can name it. Uh, you have the differences. Uh, some devices has the piercing technique, some devices has the rotate, rotation technique as the deep inhaler. So that's one technique. So I'll show you, uh, you have different kind of inhalers like this, dry powder devices. You name it, the Ventuhaler or Convi Haler, uh, uh, Breeze Haler, uh, Revolizer, right? Those are all the devices which you have the piercing technique. So I'll show you from the Revolizer. So <clears throat> this is the Revolizer device. So here, this device also has a uh, technique uh, to use. Before coming to that, uh, when you're using a capsule, a dry powder capsule, there's a way of uh, taking the capsule, even the capsule out. So unlike the other normal uh, tablets there in the market or the capsules in the market, you can't just push from this side and break it. You have to make a mark here. You have to make a mark here 
ஒரு <laughs> until this uh, two arrows meet together then you have to put this capsule inside which is see through side you can see the capsule here right then you have to close the device now it all seals now when you are taking this dry powder inhalers there is a breathing method so this is a classification again for uh, devices you know which you have in the market Uh, some devices uh, there are some devices but different kind of nails but the same technique uh, that's the difference and these are called the multi inhaler or the discus inhaler and you have the reservoir devices like novalize and sub inhaler so in uh, dpis the breathing technique is fast and deep now if i clearly uh, recall back the pmdis should be used as slow and deep the breathing technique and uh, the what do you call these uh, space if you are using a space device it's always a tidal breathing there uh, then uh, if you are using a dry powder inhaler is fast and deep because uh, there is a flow technique in uh, the dry powder inhalers mm, i'll there's a diagram that i'll show you Uh, which if you don't use if the patient doesn't have a capacity of you know more than 30 liters per minute uh or quick breathing or the fast breathing uh it will be very difficult to you know manage the patient in terms of getting the uh, drug delivered to the lung so patient should have the inhalation capacity more than 30 liters per minute there are devices that works uh, uh you know If to lift up the drug from the de devices you need at least 30 liters per minute because uh, the, if you take the devices in the market uh, apart from few de devices which is not available in sri lanka uh, that lift up the uh, drug uh, within uh, 10 liters per minute which is a very dead slow we call that 30 liters per minute is which a child who can suck through a straw that the speed that 30 liters per minute so if you don't have that uh, you can't use the dry powder inhaler you have to inhale very fast and deep right you know is breath actuated so you breathe, breathe out and you keep the device inside your mouth very close lips then likewise you have to inhale fast and deep mdis slow and deep dpis fast and deep as clearly shown here so patient have to take a deep breath in the sri lankan market you have devices with the capacity you need at least uh, the between like you know it varies like you know 20 to 60 liters per minute you know you have to have that capacity different kind of because these materials are made as such uh, and the device resistance also plays a major role because this is a breeze inhaler and uh, this will you know you can see only with certain uh, drugs the now it's not available this inhaler has a particular this is this inhaler this is a dry powder device and this is used for uh, used for copd patients you know how much you know lacking with Uh, in in inhalation capacity for them in spray flow for them so this device has a 10 liters per minute to lift up the drug because this device is made as such the resistance is very low the, the lower the resistance higher the lung deposition the higher the resistance the lower the lung deposition so this has a lower uh, resistance so you can use it only for, for one month so when you start using the resistance develops so the delivery will be very much less so this comes with third capsule with this device you can use only for one month so the you know just imagine a dry powder device used for copd patients 
So uh, this is also a piercing device. You just open it and you put inside the capsule here and just close it and you move it. Same as others like this, you know, these are the normal devices that you have in the market. You know, you just open it. This you put the capsule in this way and you close it and you pierce it from here and you just in fast and deep. So there are different kind of devices. So in Sri Lankan market, you have to have uh, there are devices to use, but the thing is the in uh, the inhalation capacity or, or the inspired flow matters most when you're giving a dry powder device. Same as the MDIs, you have to gargle your throat and you have to uh, spit it out. So that's the other part of that. So this is a simple way. Uh, I just okay. You see, uh, this is uh, the most common, most commonly used uh, inhaler. So uh, we call it the deep inhaler. You can remove this apart from like this, right? You have to close it. Then as I uh, previously said, uh, you have to open this capsule as marked like this, then you can take it out. You take the transparent side always and put inside, you have a, a hole here. You have a hole here. Here you insert this, like this, until your finger level is there, like this. Then what you have to do is, you have to rotate the device. Then the capsule will break. So here's, if you clearly see, I don't know whether you can see, the capsule breaks and falls in, likewise. Now the capsule has fallen in, right? Some patients try to open this and break the capsule manually and put it the drug there and inhale. So that's not that we uh, normally recommend uh, as uh, trainers, inhaler trainers. We recommend that you should break as this, then uh, you have to inhale fast, and deep. So that's how we use. Breathe out, deep in the mouth. Very fast and deep breath should be taken via this uh, DP inhaler. So then again, you can see uh, the drug whether it's used or you know you have to take two three breaths until the powder is all finished. You can see if it's a see through device, it's okay. But if it's not a see through like this. You have to take four to five breaths after when you're using a single capsule. Then after the finished capsule should be taken like this. Then what happens? You have to use this in bold part out like this. And you can push this capsule like this. And you can take the remaining part out from the other capsule like this. Now it's free. Now you can see here, and this also can be washed uh, within two, three days. You can wash and uh, never put uh, inside anything. And you just wash it from, uh, open the tap and you can wash it and just uh, keep it dry uh, in the air. This is how we use it. Just insert the capsule, rotate it. That's it. So these are single dose inhalers. So here you can see just insert, shut it. And just breathe out, keep the mouth, keep the device in the mouth, just inhale. Here, the deep inhaler, you insert the capsule, rotate it, inhale. Uh, the simple way that you explain to the patient is the best way because if you, uh, if you take more uh, steps to them, uh, they will get complicated. That we have seen patient try, uh, try to get complicated when you, when you say a lot of steps. If you see here, uh, if you see how to use a dry pot inhaler, you have eight steps here. So if you want to say this all to the patients, you know, you know, use when you are using a device. So it will confuse them. So just simple as this. Uh, before using techniques, you know, you have to uh, have, have the hygiene there and breathing techniques should be definitely spoken out or train the patient on that. And the inhaler techniques and uh, the after usage and the storage. That's enough for the patient. Uh, then 
always you should uh, train the patient and you have to take the uh, you have to evaluate the patient whether the patient is doing correctly uh, else uh, in asthma related uh, uh, treatments if you don't if the patient doesn't use this properly the treatment will be nothing so uh, this is the dpi flow chart uh, so, you know if you see any uh, dpi healer has this mesh uh, you know this kind of mesh here yeah, here this also has a mesh here right you see the small small uh, square type mesh right so the drugs comes just not only the drug it comes with lactose the binding factors and you know you have different kind of uh, propellants uh, surfactants and everything comes together so uh, so any dry powder device, even you know, it has a reservoir, or you have a blister or disc like uh, discus, or if a capsule, the meaning that you should uh, take fast and deep, the mesh has, uh, if you when you when you inhale, this disintegrates uh, or uh, disaggregates the drug. So the particles only goes in. Most of the drug particles goes in. So you have to use these uh, breathing techniques very fast and deep. Else, the drug won't lift up. Uh, the most of the drug will be uh, deposited in the uh, oropharyngeal region. So, when you're using a D DPI, that's the most important because it it always has a mesh. It should forcefully hit the mesh to disaggregate the drug from the propellants and everything. Then uh, the binding drugs. Then only it uh, moves into the lung when you inhale. So the pulmonary delivery. So these are breath actuated devices, uh, which is we, we had in Sri Lanka. Uh, here you have the gas like PMBIs, but this is breath actuated. Uh, the hand lung coordination is uh, uh, no need here. Uh, this was the autohaler, which developed by Sipla. We call it uh, Syncobreed. It is about to come. So it's very easy when you open the cap. Just uh, reminding on, just when you open the cap, it loads. So nothing is need to be done. You just keep them uh, breathe out. Just keep them out. <sighs> inhale. When you inhale, this activates. You need don't need to press. But yet again, you have to shake it. Keep it upright position. Open it. Then it's loaded. Then you keep them out, and you <sighs> inhale. That's it. These are breath actuated inhalers. These are a little bit costly. Uh, then you have the reservoir type one, which is discus. Uh, and uh, and the turbo inhaler. These are different kind of inhalers. Uh, this is a discrete inhaler. This comes in uh, blister type. Uh, it is like loading a gun. If you see here, I couldn't find a discus to demonstrate to you. I'm really sorry on that. You keep the finger here. If you can see my cursor, you keep the finger here. You load it. Load load it like a gun. There is a place to push it. When you push it, the drug is loaded. When you breathe out. Keep the inhaler, you inhale via the uh, discus. Then, no need to push it back. When you close the cap, there's a cap. You need to close the device, right? Open it and close it. When you open it, it won't load. You have to load it manually. Then you close the device. The, the pushing part, the loading part, the lever comes back when you close. So you no need to uh, uh, push it, you know, manually push it back. Just push it once and think. So the one disadvantage you are using is whenever you load it, uh, the drug comes out. So if the patient uh, load it and if the patient doesn't inhale and you know forgot unfortunately the patient forgot to inhale and if he loads the second time, it will be double dosing. And uh, this is very heat sensitive. The patient should keep in a very cold or else very very cool dry place, else uh, the effectivity of the drug will be going down. The turbulent is a different scenario. It's a reservoir. You have the drug inside itself, made out of thirteen unique pa unique particles, and it is very unique device. Uh, it has a highest inhalation capacity about about uh, 30, 32, 36 percent lung deposition. This is how it looks like. Right? It's available. If you see different kind of drugs, Derby Hiller comes with uh, the brand names. This is the beauty and formatal preparation. We have the beauty preparation as well. 
when you take uh, as a new uh, drug or new device, right? You can open the cap like this, right? And you have a uh, reading uh, a dose count in this. You clearly see. You're using device now. It always comes to one side. You can um, rotate. You have to rotate this part. Always you should hold the device upright when you're loading. But when you're inhaling, it doesn't matter. But if you are loading the drug, you have to hold the uh, device upright else the drug won't uh, load properly. So you have to hold it. Either you hold from any hand, doesn't matter. You hold it in the middle like this. You don't it hold like this because there are uh, veins inside. So you have to hold the device with two fingers like this. Then you have to rotate to a side which it turns. So there is one way that it turns, right? You have to rotate it. So that's you hear a click sound when you turn one side. So this is the you should do it at the first time only. You should turn one side in the beginning itself. You hear a click sound. That's like breaking the seal. So if you are, this is not ready to use now. If you are using this device, you have to load it again for the first part. You have to turn it fully away from your body, then turn it back until the click sound hurts. If you see, you can hear the click sound likewise. You have to hear the click sound that's loaded. Now you can breathe out, then you can keep the device. Then so here, every time you load it, Turn away from your body, turn into your body, then you hear a click sound, then you inhale. Unfortunately, if you don't inhale, like, you know, like, uh, you know, if you forgot to inhale or something, if you twist back and twist again, when you hear a click sound, the drug won't overdose because the drug which is loaded to the inhalation chamber will go to the reservoir back. The new dose will come up. But the dose counter is me mechanical, it will move. Uh, then, of course, you have to keep the uh, count uh, if you uh, misplace them. So that's how the, the turbihuela works uh, and the DP works and uh, that's how the devices works. So uh, the dose counter. So the just want to mention about the dose counter as well, how to read the dose counter as I the slide has gone in front. So Different pharmaceutical companies, you know, the first pharmaceutical company brought down here with the PMDI with the dose counter, which is initiated, you know, even the GINA and the uh, uh, recommends that, you know, you should have a dose counter. So, uh, according to that guidance, the dose counters are initiated. We have a color code here in a speculated devices like this. You have a color code here, red, it will find out red. That means it's over. So, here, here uh, the doses are marked numerically 20 by 20. So if you have, it starts from 120. You can see the remaining doses, not the uh, used doses. So 120, 120 doses, then uh, slowly uh, moves out. Uh, then you can see 100, 80, 60, 40. Every single uh, puff, it moves, but numerically you can read up 20 by 20. So when it starts reach 40, as you see here, start coloring red. If the patient cannot see the numbers, if, you, if they can see the colors, they can you know buy a new one. Uh, the patient can be tracked very easily. It will build a confidence to the patient. Uh, if a drug like you know using as SOS, these dose counters are very important because uh, they can you know uh, in both ways they can throw the device when the drug is there else they can use the inhaler while drug is not there. So the both can happen. Even the drug is finished, the propellant or the gas could come out. Uh, about 20 to 30 puffs are there. It can come out, but the drug will be not there. So like using a salbutamol preparation like that, it will cause a problem for the patient as well. So this is how you read uh, these uh, those counters. So uh, 
Gina has recommended how to use, uh, you know, a, a way of like we call the 4C techniques. Gina is global initiative for asthma. They uh, they recommend uh, the, because they have mentioned that most of the patients up to eighty percent cannot use their inhaler incorrectly. That is that is you can see here even. So they tell uh, choose the device correctly. There's a slide how to choose. You have to choose the direct, uh, correct device, uh, whether it's a DPI or MDI. Choose the device correctly, and you have to check the inhaler technique at every moment, uh, every opportunity that you get, and you know. Uh, even though you how many how much you train the patient, you have to get the you have to evaluate the patient that the patient is using correctly or not. Then, uh, if the patient is not using correctly, uh, just mention what is need to be corrected. Then you have to confirm the patient that you are using correctly. Then the patient will follow up. Uh, even if the patient is coming to the next visit, please ask the patient to bring the device and please check uh, the, the technique again because. Uh, how much ever that we uh, uh, try to educate the pharmacies and you know the resource persons in the pharmacy in the pharmacies and so on, uh, it is very lacking. You know, very handful of people they you know they try to uh, train this to the patient. So check two to three times. So choose the device, check it, correct it if they are wrong, and just confirm to the patient to use it. This is uh, the recommendation from the Gina, it is global initiative for asthma. So choosing the correct inhaler depends on different capacity of the patient inhalation in, in spread flow. This this was published in a, in a clinical trial in a recent past. Uh, there are this this should based on patient characteristics. Uh, patients should have a quick and deep voluntary in, inhalation. Uh, they should have a sufficient inspiratory flow and hand lung coordination when you are giving a uh, when you are choosing a device. So DPIs, yes, if they have a quick quality inhalation, yes, possible. Uh, and you know, if they have the correct inspirative flow, then you can choose the device and initiate them uh, with the, if they have a proper hand lung coordination. If you see PMDA, the spacer is always you know in the green color, so you can use that for a better treatment option. Uh, but there are patients, you know, mild cases that they have a good inspirative flow, they can always go with the dry powder inhaler. So inhaler choices in children, this is the choice, the first choice is MDI spacer with a mask. Pardon me, I didn't show you with the mask. So this is how you fix it. There is a silicon mask like this. You, you fix it for the inside from the mask side. Uh, here, these, uh, the shape, if you see, this always the air intake should be up, up wise. So the shape for, of the nose. Some patient, some pharmacist has said that you have to use this downward like this. I saw a patient very recently uh, who is using very incorrectly in this way. So it should be fixed in this way. You can fix this like this. Then you have to, if a baby, you have to make a up right position. Then keep the mask like this, then you can initiate, make them breathe a few times. So that's how you use the mask. Sorry, I couldn't mention that. And never use uh, uh, tritropium or hypertropium uh, with a mask because uh, they say very careful to use, especially tritropium because it's a uh, anti collagenic. Uh, so it can cause issues if you. If you, if you you, uh, you know, if it's just that, so be careful when you're initiating a tricopium special. So, this is how you initiate device for the children. So, thank you very much. If there's any questions, uh, you can ask. This is the way that uh, normally you get uh, choices. So, if there are any questions, please do ask. Uh, I can correct and I can answer the questions. Because these uh, inhaler techniques always should be taught 
in a physical cons cons uh, con context because you should feel it. Uh, otherwise, it should, it's, it's, that's a better way. But this is also a way better way, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, you can stay from home and, you know, you can see the video. There are videos in the internet as well, you can always see. And finally, the nasal space, right? So if you're using the nasal space as well, just check it, right? Then you have to always uh, remove the cap. Inside the, uh, if, you, if you're using the nasal space, you have to uh, clear your nose. If you're having phlegm, you know, and so on, you have to clear the nose. And if you are inserting, uh, you, are, you want to uh, spread to this nostril, always one puff means both nostrils. So you have to close this nose, insert it, and you have to angle away from the nose to your eyesight a little bit. And you have to spray. When you are taking the spray, you can possibly tilt your head down and you can spray away from your nose, which is to your eyesight, and just spray. And when you are spraying, just a small sniff is enough, like you know, likewise. If you uh, breathe or inhale through your nose very fast, it can uh, drip down again to your throat and you can feel the taste. So that's the way uh, which you uh, use the nasal spray. After spraying, you breathe from your mouth. About uh, 10 breaths from your mouth after you use it. So you wipe out the nozzle with a dry cloth and that's it. And store it in a cold, dry place. Any questions? Uh, yes, there's a question in the chat box, Mr. Aravinda. Yes, uh, one is how long can you use space device? Right. Yes, ma'am. All the devices are uh, you probably can be, all the devices are recommended to change within uh, three three months because a DP inhaler can be used as three months. Even a spacer, non-static spacer, depends on the usage of the patient because we can't uh, always recommend because the minimum time is three months. If the patient can change, even they used once or even the daily use, once and keep, uh, once they use and sometimes patient use for a few days and they, they keep it and they try to use again. That that, 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 that that doesn't work. After usage or continuous usage, uh, within three months, you have to change. If it's a non-static spacer, uh, if it's a static spacer, if it's a non-static spacer, you can uh, use up to six months. But between in, during this six month period, if the color changes, uh, because manufacturer defaults always can come. Uh, if the color changes, you know, can't become yellowish or, you know, different kind of color changes, white color, you see that you should uh, change the device immediately. Some devices are there, so the color will be changing. But you have to uh, clean it properly uh, and store it properly in a cool, dry place. Then the device can be used up to uh, three to six months. Uh, more than six months, uh, usage is not recommended. Uh, if so, the delivery will be very much less for the patient. Because normally uh, using uh, a D, uh, an MDI will have a 10 to 20 uh, percent lung deposition, and MDI with a spacer brings up to 30 to 36 percent, uh, and it reaches up to 44 sometimes. Uh, but a DPI always Again, 15 to 25 percent lung deposition. Always is below 30 percent lung deposition. So uh, that much of a drug only goes in. So if the spacer is used a long time, that much of a drug also won't reach the peripheries. You know, you need to deliver the drug to the alveoli level at least. Though some drug particle size is also very much uh, small very much big you know you know you don't know you know manufacturer always doesn't say how what the drug, drug particle is so you have to assume this drug works and then you know, you have to give it uh, both should come hand in hand uh, drug particles the inhaler techniques and the correct device when you use it the treatment will be better so three to six months is the answer Okay, that's other question. Is it a good practice to remove the canister while demonstrating the technique to the patient? Will it disturb the mechanics of the inhaler? Yes. Yes, ma'am. You never remove uh, the canister. Right. If you remove the canister, 
it will be very difficult to know now these days uh, the devices comes in those counter so uh, unless otherwise there is a special need or no no if you remove it is very it will be very difficult to uh, plug it back for the patient so you can request from the companies that uh, some companies have uh, for a demonstration purpose you can keep it but if you remove this canister and show for the patient the patient will also follow the same so that will be a problem so uh, that will be a problem uh, when they are using so if, if they doesn't you know how put it back correctly uh, because this this uh, what do you call this uh, this part of the canister or the uh, valve should properly connected to the actuator if it doesn't make that properly uh, the flow or the spray won't come properly like this so avoid removing the canister or the parts but you can always remove the cap and use but avoid using uh, no removing the canister out Yes, only one more question, and uh, someone asked to please explain the matter you described about cryotropium use the spacer and the mask, as yeah. I couldn't follow it. <laughs> Somebody sure. uh -huh. <laughs> because tritropium means used as a bronchodilator, tritropium and ipratropium. Ipratropium is a drug which is both are falls into anticholinergics. So the the mechanism is different uh, in terms of anticholinergics. They stop or the it is inhibition of the constriction, you know, the muscarinic receptor. So it stops the constriction. So that's the uh, mode of action of tritropium. So when you are using a mask, if not properly sealed for elderly patient, if you are using with a mask. If it's not properly sealed, it can the drug can go to your eyes. So if it goes, your pupil won't uh, dilate. It stops. Uh, it stops constrict. You know, you sh your uh, pupil should always you know have this uh, dilating and constricting pack. So if it goes to the eye, the it will be stopped because the receptors are all over the place, not only in the lung. So there are receptors in the eye as well. So it it, it the constriction fact can uh, has has a harm uh, if uh, if reached to the eye. So avoid using mask if you are using a tritropium. Yes, of course you can use a spacer, uh, but not mask when you are using tritropium or ipratropium. Ipratropium okay because it has a short lifespan, you know, four to six hours. Uh, obviously, you are using uh, when you are using nebulizers. Uh, I didn't explain how to use nebulizers because most of the doctors know how to use uh, nebulizers they have in their practices. So I didn't explain that, but it's very easy uh, to use the nebulizer. Uh, so when you're using a nebulizer, you have to use the mask. So you use ipratropium and uh, uh, what do you call these uh, salbutamol preparation in combination with even with a steroid like, you know, baby steroid or whatever. So when you are mixing and you know when you are giving it, the, the, the concentration is very much smaller. Uh, but if you take the tritropium, we are inhaling 18 micrograms, it's much more higher and it works for 24 hours. So that has an effect. So that's the reason that you should avoid using masks when you are using a tritropium especially. Hope I uh, answered the question. Yes, I hope it's done. <laughs> now, I think there are no more questions. So, as there are no more questions, I think we can conclude the session. So I would like to thank you, Mr. Aravinda, for the, such an informative lecture. And also I would like to thank all the participants and good night to all. Thank you. Good night, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Aravinda. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.